Hi, this is Miss Andrea. Um, today, let's talk about um, the college prep plan, specifically um, eighth grade social studies and language arts. Um, and yesterday, we talked about math, and I know it was overwhelming, and it will be overwhelming. Math is what it is, and it takes, for some people, more hours to complete and just more dedication to it. But the good news is that um, language arts and history are can be a much lighter load. Um, and the reason is, is that they can be taught at the same time. English and history can be taught as one unit. And um, this is very low stress and um, language arts reinforces what is taught in history if you pair it up correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and say, forgive me. I'm gonna be looking down a lot. This is information packed and I had to type it out. Um, also yesterday I joked about, you know, how I was gonna write a homeschool book and it's been five years and I haven't gotten to it. And, um, just the course of doing this homeschool prep guide, I'm I'm writing several pages per video at this point. So there'll at least be um, a curriculum pamphlet and high school checklist to the college portfolio, college entry, when I am done with this series. It'll probably take a couple of months, but I surprised myself with that. I'm sorry, I can't figure out how to turn off the Facebook um, message uh, notifications. I thought I did and another one just popped up. So please forgive the chimes. I'm learning. I'm editing now. You may have noticed my video is a little smoother. I'm editing now and that's time consuming too. So bear with me. I am relearning all the stuff that I knew years ago and all the, <laughs> everything's different. All the software's different. Everything's different. I wish people would stop talking to me on Facebook. I will have to uninstall the app from this computer because I can do it on my phone or iPad, right? Right, so as I was saying, what I did and what I've encouraged other homeschoolers to do, this is tried, true, and tested, is to teach language arts and, and history as one course. Okay, um, and the way you do it is you match up the literature and the history topics together and you just um, paste them to go together. Um, how do you do that? Well, if your child is studying world history, they study world literature. If they're studying U.S. history, they study U.S. literature. If they're studying, what else is there? U.S. government. They study U.S. literature biographies of um, historic figures. So um, whatever history is going on, we just match our literature up to it and we track along. And, and you may have noticed, I've said this before, our children were doing history through the arts at a homeschool school. Um, this kind of just follows the whole classic curriculum thing where you teach, you know, history as a story in order and then all the other subjects come along it. So, okay, um, what I'm going to do is there are gonna be a lot of links at the bottom of this video and then I'm probably gonna go over to my blog, you notes know, from a homeschooling mom and um, blog it also. But there, there's a white paper on on how to go about syncing history and literature. And so there'll be a link to that. So it's scientifically proven. Um, there'll be a link for um, book lists for novels that are set um, in different countries for children and teens. Um, because what we're going to talk about for eighth grade is uh, 
is world geography or world history. So if we're going to do world geography or world history in eighth grade, and geography is most common, you know, for ninth grade, it overlaps into middle school really well, and it can be used for high school credit. Um, but, you know, whichever one you're interested in, geography, world geography or world history, um, teams up really good with world literature. Um, and when I did it with my kids, we literally, um, gosh, we did some Bible stuff and, and we weren't Christian homeschoolers. We weren't secular homeschoolers either because we are Christian, but some of the biblical texts lined up with certain areas of the world. So that was neat. Um, we did a lot of classical novels. We did some current novels. So anyway, um, I'm going to link a book list for novels set in other countries. Um, and it's for children and teens. And next to each title is the age range. We're doing eighth grade, you know, 12 to 14 is fine. Um, you know, parental guidance, you, you decide if the book is, uh, appropriate for your child. Um, in addition to, uh, to reading, you know, alongside your history, you also want to do some grammar um, for this. I like a grammar workbook. I like something that the kids can feel in touch and we can hold and, you know, I can take a red pen and we can go through what's right, what's wrong and discuss, discuss it because grammar is really kind of a one-on-one -on -one deal, especially it was for me and my kids. We would, you know, discuss grammar a lot. And we would make up grammar games, actually, that we played in the car. But, like, grammar was always a discussion. So that's why I like a workbook. So you can, you know, do the test and then have a discussion. And I'm going to link you to some of my favorite workbooks. Um, there's Editor-in-Chief by the Critical Thinking Company. Um, I love the Critical Thinking Company. It tells your child why and not just what. Um, there's the SAT Reading and Writing Prep because why not start test prepping for college entry? Remember, we are a test prep program and the child is going to be taking the practice for the PSAT um, at least as early as 10th grade. And then they'll take the PSAT that counts in the 11th grade. But you can, you can go and take the PSAT, I think, every year up until it counts in the 11th grade, which um, sets your child up for national merit scholarships yeah um and then for history i just like plain old textbooks that the public school uses um so i linked to um the holt mcdougall world geography um and always get the teacher's wraparound version because, you know, they can read the stuff there and then you can give them a test and then you have the answers to the test all in that. I mean, you can get the student's edition and the teacher's wraparound edition, but I trusted my kids and I just got the one book. And then there's the world history book by the same company that I'm going to be linking you to there. If you're as much of a critical thinking nut as I am, um, you might want to use the critical thinking companies world history detective because it takes you through world history in it and it kind of helps you try to figure out people's motivations as we go through world history so we've talked about how you basically pace you know your history with your english you know um if they're studying the caucus mountains then you get a book you know, about the life of somebody in the Caucasus Mountains. If you're studying Russia, you get a book about someone in Russia. If you're studying Mexico and South America, you get a book about someone in, in, in Mexico or South America, a, a geography or um, a, a fiction, a historical fiction. And it, it just helps you taste and feel and breathe in that culture from a human's point of view while you're studying what happened 
Okay, so we're doing that. So now you have to grade your child, but you have um, your, your history boxes and you have your language boxes. You know, how do you peel that back out and make sense of it? Well, that's really easy. Um, in the history books, there are going to be quizzes and chapter tests. So at the end of each chapter, you go ahead and you have the child do those, right? And you grade for those. Uh, what I had was I just had a spreadsheet for every week. I'm going to, I think I'm going to, I'm going to take a picture of that. And show you um, for every chapter. And then at the end of each chapter, I just put the number or letter grade after it. Um, and then at the end of, you know, the course, I had the child write um, an essay. And then so part of their grade was based on the test and part of the grade was based on the essay. So like I said, there are quizzes and chapter tests um, complete with answers. You take these tests, they make up the bulk of the history grade. Um, for English, sparknotes.com has online questions that your student can answer for many of the novels that you will come across. Um, if that is not available, you know, you have your student write a book report and, and you grade that to go, you know, in the English folder. So you basically have a little English folder and you have a language folder, you know, and as we go along, we're like, okay, we did this, this study on Mexico. Here's your test on the facts of Mexico. Here's your book report on the book that you read about a Mexican person. Put it in the folder. Next chapter. Okay. So, okay, um, at the end of the course, they do the term paper, which you grade that one term paper in two different ways. So what you're going to do is you're going to print off two copies of your term paper and you're going to grade one copy based on content. You know, have they included a lot of historical points um, and tie the paper into historical aspects? Is it a paper written about history? How well did they convey history in that paper and how well did they get their points across you grade that based on that that goes in the history folder you take the other copy of the paper and you grade it based on their grammar their format their bibliography um and the readability you know language arts is this a good solid paper is this a paper that's high school worthy or even eighth grade worthy because it doesn't hurt to show progression through those years and you put that in that folder easy peasy so let's tie it up um step one choose a book um textbook or history curriculum step two go through the table of contents and pick books according to the geographical area and possibly the time period being covered you know in that history subject you pick a, a literature that goes along with it well. Oh, good example is in the introductory part of any of, a, of world history or world geography. I like to have the children read around the world in 80 days because it is also a his, you know, a introduction to, you know, literature, world, world literature. Right. So that's step two. Step three. Have the student read the books at the same pace that they go through the history units. Okay. Step four, use the tests and the final paper to grade the history. Five, use language, arts, grammar, writing, workbook, or test prep um, book to grade the student's language arts in addition to the questions and answers um, at the end of the novels that you get from sparknotes.com or the book reports that they write. Um, also grade the final term paper looking specifically at grammar and format of the paper. Not bad. We've killed two birds with one stone. Okay, and I'll, I'll show you what the chart, how the chart gets filled out, you know, how we've progressed to this point, but we are not done yet. Okay, did you know that your child can earn college credit starting right now. 
starting eighth grade, starting ninth grade, your child could be earning college credits and never step foot into a college class. Did you know that? So there's a program called CLEP, C-L-E-P, by the college board, the same people who make the SATs. You'll have a link. Um, you may want to get the workbooks. They, they sell these CLEP workbooks on Amazon and um, on the CLEP site where you have a link. Um, and start preparing your child for the Analyzing and Interpreting Literature CLEP. The name of it is Analyzing and Interpreting Literature. Um, if your child has been a voracious reader, um, chances are they can pass this test very young. Um, any any child who really loves to read and has um, it's it's a reading comprehension test is what it is. Um, they 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 pass this class very young, and um, so they earn three college credits. Um, it just looks really good to show. That your child has, you know, even though they're not in the schools and AP is not readily available, that they have taken steps, you know, to earn college credits while working, you know, toward high school. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So they won't be ready for a history club. There's a there's a general history club and then there's two U.S. history clubs. They will be ready for those U.S. history clubs if they take U.S. history with attention and put their heart into it, they will be ready for the U.S. history collapse. But we'll discuss that when we do ninth and 10th grade history. Um, but what they've learned this year, you know, all their tests, their, their worksheets and everything should be saved because it'll cover about 50% of the general history club exam that they can take in a couple of years okay so like so while they won't be ready for history club taking world history or world geography they should start thinking about it you know um now this i'm sorry but this is really stringent for for eighth grade but it will pay off later when your child can either start college early one of mine started college early and the other one took an extra year to enrich their portfolio to help them get college scholarships. They both got college scholarships, by the way. So final note, if this feels like a lot for eighth grade, if you're just trying to get your child into the mindset of doing college prep and you're not going to go whole hog to eighth grade because your child is still hesitant in eighth grade, I've got a solution for you. Um, for a more laid back approach, you can follow um, a textbook table of contents, like perhaps get the critical thinking um, history book. Um, you know, it's 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 a more relaxed way of doing the history and and follow that table of contents and then go online and find history podcasts that correspond to those different lessons. So y'all can just sit on a couch, read draw, do art, um, do the grammar workbooks while listening to the history podcast. Um, some of these podcasts are really entertaining. Uh, my daughter, who is a year post-college graduation, listens to these nonstop. She's considering going back for a master's in history because as an actress, she is a storyteller and she really loves telling you know, history-based stories. But in the meantime, she is becoming quite the dramaturg and quite the historian on her own by just listening to podcasts nonstop. So that's how you do history and literature. Um, there'll be some graphs at the end for you to see. There'll be lots of links below. Um, you can go to my blog um, and read that. It'll be out in a week or so. And um, until next time.